Okay, so here we're going to um, try and complete the square on another problem, but we have a little bit of a situation. Um, the problem here is because in the other that we have completed the square on, we just had the variable squared, and that was it. In this case, we have a coefficient in front of the variable. Now, the only way that we can complete the square is if that is a 1. We can't have any other number, no negative, nothing like that. It has to be a positive 1, basically, in front of the squared term. Otherwise, you can't complete the square. So, looking at this problem right now, we cannot complete the square as it is. But there is something that we can do so that we can complete the square. We need to get rid of this 2. And the way we do that is by dividing. And if we divide every single term by 2, it's as if we're dividing both sides by 2. So now what we have is y squared minus 5 halves y minus 6 equals 0. Now we can complete the square but we do need to take this constant term over. So we have y squared minus 5 halves y, and then we're going to leave a blank so that we can complete the square, equals a positive 6. Now, we're going to be dealing with a lot of fractions in this problem, so I don't want you guys to get nervous, you know, in thinking ahead. Just take it one step at a time. Your procedure says we have to take half of the middle term. So let's do it. Half of negative 5 halves would be negative 5 fourths. And then we're supposed to square that number. So negative 5 fourths squared would be 25 over 16. This is the number that we're adding to both sides. So we're adding 25 over 16 to the left and to the right. Okay, now, because we did this so perfectly, it becomes a perfect square. And just because it's a fraction, again, don't get hung up in that. This will always factor into the variable and then the halved amount. So that halved amount was a negative 5 fourths equals. Now here we do need to combine these uh, 6 plus 25 over 16. Um, let's see, we need to get a common denominator. So that would be 16. And 6 would have to be rewritten as 96 over 16. Plus 25 over 16 would be 121 over 16. So this is now equals 121 over 16. And now we're back to, we have to undo the square, so we're going to apply the square root property. This becomes y minus 5 fourths equals, here we can do the square root of 21 would be, uh, 121 rather, would be 11, and the square root of 16 would be 4, so we have plus or minus 11 fourths. And now we need to get y alone. So we're going to have to add 5 fourths to both sides. So y equals positive 5 fourths plus or minus 11 fourths. Now these are just fractions. This actually is two separate problems. We have 5 fourths plus 11 fourths and then 5 fourths minus 11 fourths. This is just adding and subtracting fractions, so we should finish it out. 5 fourths plus 11 fourths would be 16 fourths, which is 4. There's our first answer. And 5 fourths minus 11 fourths would be negative 6 fourths, which um, doesn't divide evenly, but it will reduce down into negative 3 halves. So our two answers for this problem are 4 and negative 3 halves. If you can combine them, you know, the other problems that we've done had a square root in there. We can't do anything with that to combine them. But just adding and subtracting fractions, you should always combine and simplify as much as you possibly can.